Hi, AT from CNC at Home. It's finally here. Lightburn has officially released their 2.0 version of their software. This is fantastic. It's been a few months, or actually probably longer than that in the works. They did announce this quite some time ago and there were um, pre-release versions that people were testing and I watched a few videos of some of the new features and there are a couple of things that I'm kind of excited about. Really simple things yet kind of big in my mind. What I like to do is quickly go through a few of the features that I think uh, are going to be more important for what I do and just kind of show you how those work. In general, you won't see much of a difference between the 1.7 release and the 2.0. They look very similar. I do have them on my computer running side by side. And I went through several of the different windows and comparing them and there's very little difference. There, there's a noticeable difference when you have them side by side, but I think once you go to the 2.0, everything's pretty much where you left it. Now, when I did load the new 2.0 onto my main computer that I use for CNC work, some things in the windows got messed up a little bit. Not a big deal, it was just a matter of clicking on them then moving them to where I want them to be. So, not a big deal or not really an issue at all. Let's go ahead and hop into Lightburn and let me review a few of these features that have been added. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Let's head into Lightburn. This is the 2.0 version. At first glance, everything should look exactly the same. From my understanding, the biggest part of the 2.0 release is behind the scenes. It's the development framework on which Lightburn has been built, or rebuilt, I should say. This should lead to better features, better user interface, and hopefully a faster and more stable program. I will put a link down in the description so that you can see what Lightburn has posted as far as new features within Lightburn itself. Let's start out with the shape menu. In the past, there were a list of shapes in the menu. I'll put that up on the screen. The new interface just has a single shape, and it's the last one that you used. When you click on it, you get a menu showing you rectangle, ellipse, triangle, pentagon, polygon, octagon, star, dual star. Those are the basic shapes they assume that you want to have. As always, you just tell it what type of shape you want, and you click and drag and you get, in this case, an ellipse. If I hold the shift key, I get a circle. If I hold the control key, I basically move from the center of the object. And if I hold the shift and control key, I get a perfect circle moving from the center. When I let go, there's my circle. Straightforward, easy to do. If I keep clicking, I keep getting more shapes, click and drag and get more and more shapes. Usually what I want to do is I want to manipulate this. Here's feature number two. If we go under edit and settings, there's a new setting called switch to select mode after drawing a shape. Let's turn that on. Click OK. Now the next time we draw a shape, we'll do another circle. Watch what happens to my menu selection over here as soon as I let go. It moves back up to the select mode. So instead of me drawing more shapes, I can now select a shape and then manipulate it. I can move it around. I can resize it proportionately. I can resize it disproportionately. I can also skew the object by grabbing one of these handles. So several features, I can also rotate the object however I want. And I can delete it. So that's a really neat kind of feature. 
I also still have my shape properties over here in the menu. I get this number of sides. This has always been there. So once you've drawn the default polygon, I can say I want three sides. It becomes a triangle or it becomes a square. I can put 12, I can put 25, starting to look an awful lot like a circle. But if we zoom in, we can see that it is square edges or it's flat edges on the side. If we want to do node editing on this, we just click on node editing. You'll notice we don't have any nodes to edit. And that's because it was a shape. So I'll first right click on here. I deselect it. There we go. I'll right click and tell it that I want to convert this to a path. Now that it's a path, if I go into my node editing and click my shape, you'll see that there's a node at each one of the apexes. You'll also see that I have a bunch of options. In the past, you could hover over node editing and you'd get a list of the features, which you still get. In the 2.0 version, you also get an icon for each of the different things. So for instance here, if I want to convert a curve to a straight line, or if I want to curve a line to a curve line, if I want to convert a line to a curve, I can click on that and then just pick the line. And you'll notice I end up with two handles. These handles then allow me to take my shape, take my shape, and then I can maneuver this handle to change the angle and the radius of that. So I can change the angle by moving this arm around and I can change its radius by moving the distance away. When I end up with the shape that I like, I can let go. And there's our new weird shape. So that's the update within the node editor is I have all my saved functions. The um, shortcut keys are still the same, work the same. I just get a menu now for that, which makes it a little easier to deal with. The next thing I want to take a quick look at is the Boolean editor. And what that allows me to do is manipulate shapes. So if I get a few things on here, let's just zoom back out. We'll just get a few circles on here. Get one more circle, something like that. Now, one thing I could do is I could just select all of these and I have my weld function just like I've had before and it combines all of those into one shape. The other thing I can do is go through the Boolean operators and instead of having them all listed, I just have the one and by clicking on it, I can either get this list or if I click in the center of the icon instead of this little green arrow, then I get the assistant. And when I mouse over this, it gives me a preview of what that particular option is going to do. So in this case, it's a union between A and B. This one keeps the intersection between A and B. This one subtracts B from A, and this one subtracts A from B, and then that resets, or I can just cancel. So that's kind of a neat feature just to kind of, if you can't remember which Boolean operator you want, you go through all of them, and then you get to see what it does. There have been some updates in our cuts and layers menu. I'm going to bring in another project to show this. This is a dice box project that we did some time ago. I'll put the link up in the uh, upper right hand side or upper right hand corner. I chose this because there's a bunch of layers already on the project. Several things that we can do is we can go to any one of these layer lines and right click and we get a bunch of options. We can enable and we can enable the layer. We can disable all the layers but this one. We can hide this layer. We can hide all the other layers except this one. Um, normally we get to select shape uh, in the current layer and that's grayed out at the moment. It uh, should return here. Not quite sure why. It's, it's done that in the past. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. 
Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this select all shapes in the current layer was grayed out. Now it isn't. And so if I click that, you'll see that everything that was on the green layer is now selected. And I can prove that by moving everything up. And so we can see that that particular feature worked. Um, we can also flash the content. This is what we used to get when you would double click um, one of the layers. It would, f or not double click, when you'd right click it, it would flash the layers. So you can see everything that's on that particular layer. Up on the column menu, if you right click on any one of these, you get the option to enable or disable all the layers or invert the layer selection. You can show or hide all the layers or invert the layer selection. And you can enable and disable air assist, assist or invert the air assist options. There's also, you can sort the cuts last. Not quite sure what that does. Haven't played with it yet. What this allows me to do though is I could easily just right click and say I want to enable all the layers. So I'll just click enable and you'll see that all of these have turned green. The air assist is only on for these last few. So I could right click and I could say invert the air assist. Now these top four are enabled and the bottom three aren't. So kind of some neat functionality built into our cuts and layers menu. On the 1.7 version and before, on the console tab, we also had our macros. And we can see that they're gone. Now it just looks like this. It's a console window. The macro window is a tab all on its own. And you'll have to go to the Windows menu and turn on macros to get that tab. And then I just drag it onto my um, grouping up here so that it's all grouped together. I have it right next to my console window. And the look is a little different, but the functionality is primarily the same. I can click on either one of these macros to execute it, or I can click on manage. And it brings up a little dialog where I can select either of these. I can edit that. I can delete it. I can change their order. Or I can add, which means I can create a new macro if I wanted to. So a little bit nicer to have those kind of as their own separate feature. One thing that they've added is within our units, usually the units are tied together between what we have in our design area and how the machine actually operates. They've separated those. So if I come up here as an example and switch from millimeters to inches, we see that my working area units have changed. My units up here for position and width, that's all in inches now. Over here on controlling the machine, everything is still in millimeters. If I wanted to change that, I would come up to my device settings and then change from millimeters to inches. When I click OK, then we see over here everything's now in inches. I like having everything in millimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that back. Of all the new features within Lightburn, the one that I was really looking forward to is the this switch to select mode after drawing a shape. I can't tell you how many times I said that I wanted a circle or a square. I drew it, and then the next thing I went to do was manipulate this, and what ended up happening was I, I drew another shape. So let me, let me turn that back off. I'll show you what I mean. This is how the old version worked. You draw your circle, and then when you were done, if you went to manipulate this one, it would start drawing another circle. And so you could draw a circle after circle after circle. And that's not what I typically end up wanting to do. Like in that case, I wanted to select those. So I specifically, I have to hit the escape key, or I have to click my select option there. Then I can pick all of these and get rid of them. This is a feature that's going to take a little getting used to to remember that it's on there. Um, it's just, I'm going to really like this one, I think. So now when I go to draw a circle, I get my circle. And then if I went to do something else now, I'm actually selecting. 
And so I can grab this, do my manipulation. I can resize it, um, skew it, um, alter its ratio, do whatever I needed to do. I hope you found this delve into the new Lightburn 2.0 useful. There are plenty of other features. These were ones that I felt were going to be the most useful for me, at least that I found so far. Maybe there'll be more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you like the content of our channel, think about subscribing as that really helps us out. Enjoy doing your CNC at home projects. And get the 2.0 version of Lightburn and start messing with it. It's a great program. Oops. <laughs>